heard a second ago that there was a survey that was done previously on what your guys' most challenging marketing problems are. And funny enough, it seems that the answer was you need more leads. <laughs> right? Okay. A couple more questions. Who here runs their marketing org? Who here runs digital marketing for the marketing org? All right. Who here runs testing for the marketing org? Anybody who here owns technology for the marketing board? All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about testing for a minute, and uh, we're partners with Adobe, they do a great job. And my goal is actually to tell you guys a couple of things that we've done, that in 90 days, we've actually made a run rate for our company that's made us about $2 million in EBITDA. Who here likes to make money for the company? All right, there we go, okay. Now we're okay. all right, so, Everything I'm going to share with you literally done in 90 days, and it's got us on a run rate of another couple million bucks a year in profit. So this is like super real world stuff, nothing too complicated that you can't do yourself. We've done it very fast. Um, I had the luxury of doing it a couple times previously, so it became a little bit easier, but I'll try to walk you through how we did it really quickly using some tools that everybody has, including in Boca, and uh, show you what we did. So, uh, is this clicker? All right, thank you. So, all right, so yeah, so this is what we do. We, do, we work on credit. We have uh, three brands, credit.com, progression as our kind of a parent. Uh, we work with Lexington Law, credit.com. Essentially, I work with products that every single one of you guys uses. Uh, everybody here has credit, bought a car, bought a house, has credit cards, so you use technically credit. We work with credit to help you either get your credit better or monitor your credit. Uh, how do clients find us? It's about a 50-50 mix of uh, partnerships and uh, Online, offline, we I oversee all of marketing, see every channel, both online, offline, brand, and uh, kind of, uh, performance marketing, so I get to see everything, um, which makes it pretty fun. We'll spend about nine figures a year on marketing, so yeah, we, we end up in big budgets, but it ends up, uh, it's just bigger problems with more money. It's no different than anything else that anybody does. All right, so why is testing critical for marketers? Uh, why do you guys think testing is critical? Anyone? Uh, I like more leads, and testing gets me more leads when it comes down to it. That's plain and simple. Uh, so here's a question for you guys. If you are able to double your website conversion through testing, what is the marketing CPA of those additional sales? Anybody have a guess? Anybody? How much does it cost on additional sales if you double your website conversion? Zero. If you've already spent the money to get the traffic to your website and you double the conversion, you have no additional cost in creating those sales from a marketing perspective. That's free. I like free sales. All right, this is the website we started off with Lexington Law. It's a law firm that we own that actually helps on credit repair. Uh, as you can see, a little bit all over the place, has a phone number and other stuff. Uh, call and get started online. We actually have four ways you can buy from us, which makes it super complicated. A lot of times, testing tools say what's better, this or that, but it's not always just this or that. It's always, well, it's this, 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 and that. And then how do you take all that into consideration? It becomes a little bit complicated. So what we look at, and I encourage you to look at, is make sure you're looking at all of the aspects and ways that you can actually have people buy from you or respond from you in your funnel because if you're not, you're really actually not running an effective test. You're kind of missing out on the real, uh, real purpose here. So uh, we went from this to this. Uh, this is a hero. Uh, obviously, you see we put a big phone number there and said call us instead of doing all these other things that we wanted to do originally. This is an example of the full on landing page. Um, a little bit cleaner. You know, this is pretty stodgy law for me. This is, hey, do you have a problem with your credit report? Actually, here, this is a really funny thing. I'll just tell you guys this. Not to plug our services, go do whatever you want. One in five Americans has incorrect statements on their credit report, which makes your credit score go down. 50 points on your credit score can cost you $60,000 in interest payments on a 30 year mortgage on a house in the United States. If you don't know what your credit score is, make sure you take a look at it because it'll cost you a dump load of cash if you buy a house. So, uh, okay, so let's do this. So, I said I'm gonna give you some real actionable stuff. Um, and this is what we actually use Adobe Schools, like I said. You can use, but to be fair, you can use Optimizely or other sorts of tools as well. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, I'm just trying to be politically correct. Uh, so this is a current funnel. Um, who looks at math and data in their marketing order? Great. Yes. Now we're talking. All right. So imagine you get 750,000 impressions. And just nod with me if you know what I'm talking about. 5% you get clicks. 37,000 visits to your website, right? And my math, I think it's right. I had someone double check from last time. All right, and you've got two different ways that people can buy from you. So you can either pick up the phone or you can buy online. So let's just say it's a one and a half percent people that buy or get a couple of you. Five percent people that call. Convert, 100% of those because they're probably, you know, 40%. Anyways, all the way down. 178 paid sales on that side and 638 sales on that side. So who does testing right now has a phone number on their website and doesn't take it into consideration? Anybody? Or you just don't want to raise your hand and admit that you're just realizing that all of your tests are actually not accurate. Okay. So imagine for two seconds that you can keep everything the same and you can move from 5% to 7% on how many people pick up the phone and call you through testing. Again, let's go back here. No phone number in the middle of the page. This is this thing down here, it's up there. But went to this, right? Big phone number in the middle of the page, pretty obnoxious. So it's possible, right? So you go from 5% to 7%, and hey, look at that. All of a sudden, you got more sales. How much did the sales cost us in this example? Zero. Yes, now we're talking. There we go, this math is awesome. Uh, all that stuff we did in school, we thought we'd take those math classes that we hated, like calculus and stuff, and all of a sudden actually went back to help us marketing. So, we just got a bunch more sales for free, which is good. 638, 893, hey, pretty much a 40% increase in sales. Not bad, right? On, what, 2%, 5 to 7%. So you don't have to have big numbers to make this stuff really pay off. It can be all small. So anyways, hey, 40%. All right, now let's talk about unit economics for a second. Sorry, I'm getting super nerdy on this, but this is how we think about stuff. And I thought, I was like, hey, I'm going to help you guys make sure you know how to walk back into your company and make some money. So on this side, this is super fictional. This has nothing to do with us. I put these numbers in paper. Cost us, let's say you spend $75 to market your product, you know, and your Google AdWords conversions and all that stuff, or your Adobe products that take all this into consideration. No, there is no other way to do it outside of Adobe. Uh, 75 bucks, your product cost costs you 50 bucks, uh, sales cost is 25, your other G&A, you know, your accounting people, they like to have this other stuff, they always want them to there, and they come up with this fictitious number called EBITDA, even though nobody can ever actually figure out what that means. So it costs you 160 bucks to create a sale on your unit economics, right? All of a sudden, we got these sales that cost us how much again? Zero. Right, got it. Okay, now you're with me. And your cost just became 85 bucks. Holy cow, that's a lot of money. Oh, that's my arrows again. Uh, hey, look, you just reduce your sales cost by 46% by literally making 2% increase in phone calls. So again, not lots have big impact. So here's the cool thing. So let's say you do 50,000 of those puppies a month, right? Okay, so take 50,000 times your 75, you just made $3.75 million. So again, let's go back all the way here. This is fun. Oh, I missed it again. You literally went from five to seven percent in this example, and we just made three point seven five million dollars. None of this stuff is like super complicated. It's just how you look at the data, and it really can have monster impacts in your business without spending any additional dollars. If you want to be a rock star, go do this and show it to your CFO, and you'll be able to do whatever the heck you want. You'll be able to buy whatever you want. You can buy all the Adobe tools you want. Work with me here. That's the idea you know, to, right? You can you can upgrade your tools into Adobe tools. You can hack all. You get it. Okay, you can do everything, right? So again, this stuff isn't super duper hard. It's just how you look at the information, and how you actually set yourself up. All right. So three things I'm going to talk to you about uh, that are examples of things you can do. Not all traffic is created equal. Marketing's math. I'm going to give you five words. That who, who here actually pays attention to their phone calls? Great. I'm going to give you the best five words you're ever going to learn. If there's anybody from my team here that would tell you exactly what they are, everybody knows them. All right, so not all traffic is created equal. Here's this like crazy thing over here. It's an eye chart. You can't even see it. We actually have 32 different segments of traffic. So we don't do it by personas. Sorry. 
We do it by where you came from. So a branded search query is very different than a non-branded search query. So for me, if somebody types in the words license and law, they already have been exposed to my brand, they know what they want. They buy at a very high rate, versus my credit is F and I'm buying a house tomorrow. That's a non-brand search query, very different. That person is looking for something very different than a brand query. So we actually have, so when we do these experiences, oh, let me go back again, I should have done this differently, but we have these experiences based on where you came in from, you get a very different experience, whether it's mobile or desktop, how you know how you actually function on mobile. Kyle showed you an example of something we did at Vivint when I was there. We have mobile first strategies there where it's capture call, it's not it's not fill out this form. Who's ever filled out a form on a mobile device? Twice. Twice? <laughs> that's, one, that's two more times than you should have. Um, yeah, so we, we spent a lot of time thinking about how to do mobile first in that situation because health automation is a super complex thing. So uh, it's, we think about it really as an eye chart. Again, I'm sorry, I should have done this differently. But where you came from, what engine you came from, direct entry, things like that. I'll give you another tip. Like, if you guys have customers that go to your desktop uh, website, most likely a lot of them are members. Start cooking them. I know we said move no beyond cookies, but start cooking them and actually giving your customers that are your, your customers a better experience if they're going to go and log in than showing them your marketing website and telling them how they can save 50% of the product that they already bought from you. Okay, so uh, that's number one. Uh, again, here's the way that we thought about this. We talked about brand versus non-brand. We actually found that showing somebody an example of their credit score in a non-brand situation versus asking if you have a bad credit report in a brand situation actually really created a lot of lift. Um, so that's just one quick example of how to, how to look at uh, different segments of traffic differently. Uh, two, uh, marketing's math. Uh, I have a funny joke internally that I actually don't like to hire marketers at all anymore. I only hire statisticians and STEM students out of college. Uh, they're, I'd rather teach a STEM student that has analytical skills how to do marketing than a marketing student that actually has no math skills how to do marketing. It doesn't work. So if you're looking at this and you're completely confused and you don't have anybody that can actually on your team understand what this is, go hire a math student because to do really, really effective testing and make all that money that you're going to go send to the CFO, you have to be able to do complex math and understanding how to do testing really effectively. I'm sorry, there's really no way around it. You can let optimize your test. Sorry, there is no optimize <laughs> I said the O word, bad. Let test and target do all the work for you, but you still have that people that can analyze and understand it. And it's actually kind of complicated. So you guys in here that run marketing teams, you don't need to be able to do it, but you need to have a kid that actually understands Excel really well and figure out how to do it. Uh, in our company, we're a little bit nerdy. You might be talking about fantasy football right now when you go to lunch and you do team lunches. We just went to a team lunch last week, and literally the conversation went to what is your favorite Excel function? So if, if you don't have people that get into that level of nerdiness, go find them, hire them, trust me, they'll make you money. All right, three, the five best words that if you take phone calls into consideration, I swear just go do this and you will make money. Make the phone number bigger. <laughs> I'm dead serious. And you think I'm joking? Like, dead, you think I'm joking? Go make the phone number twice as big on your website, and then when you think it's big enough and your designer is upset with you because you made it so big, big and it's obnoxious, go make it twice as big after they tell you no, after you've already made it twice as big and then it's big enough. I guarantee you'll make more money. So, here, it's up there. Get started online, our services, Junkie old law firm landing page. We made the phone number a lot bigger, and within 90 days, we've made millions of dollars more money over the long haul of the course of the year. I'm not joking, it's that easy. All right, that's all I got for you. I hope I've given you something uh, along with some Adobe products and using Invokens and things like that that have actually showed you this is actually not super hard. You can do it, everybody can do it. You can make a lot of money, you can be a rock star in your own company. Uh, hire math students if you don't have some because they're super duper smart. Uh, and to be honest, I've used call tracking for probably 10 years. I've used a lot of the different services. I think in Vocus, I mean, I'll, I'll plug it, but um, they really are uh, heads down probably the best tool that we've used because of the amount of data that comes along with it, what you can do. Uh, we've integrated it with Adobe and it's pretty lights out. Um, I don't know, any questions? Do you guys still do a lot with your mobile app in regards to trying to test that or if you guys completely abandoned it? No, we have, I mean, well, we have apps for our customers. 
Uh, so if you are a customer, we have apps you can use in terms of credit, credit tracking, monitoring, stuff like that. Um, that's one of the products I have on my side. So I think of, I'm the guy that has to make all of our customers, and that's kind of where I focus a lot of my time right now. Um, but no, we haven't abandoned anything in that respect. So I guess a quick follow up. So inside the app, if someone else is not, you're not being a marketing person that's running your in app experience and testing, someone completely different or? Oh, uh, fair question. Um, we have stood up our entire testing organization in the last 90 days. So when I'm sitting here saying, hey, I've actually made us millions of dollars, which I probably would be yelled at by our company when I actually told you that. I hired my first testing person, brought the software in less than 90 days ago, and we're already making on, if you think of our run rate, millions of dollars additionally. So that is on our roadmap, but I'm not there yet. Any other questions? Thoughts? Yep. How unique are the phone numbers based on the multivariate testing that you execute? How unique are the phone numbers based on the multivariate testing? Yep. Um, so the way that we do it is the ring pool that Invoca gives you. Mm -hmm. So essentially the way that the technology works is, and uh, anybody from Invoca, if I'm wrong, just feel free to correct me, <laughs> is they give you a bunch of ring, uh, phone numbers in a ring pool that has a cyclical rate based on the quantity of queries that go into that ring pool. Uh, so imagine that you get a thousand queries, they understand how many phone numbers need to be served up over what period of time and how many people stay on your website, right? And the way that we do it with Test and Target is essentially Test and Target gives you an ID that sets which uh, experience you get. Because Invoke is really good at integrating the data side of the phone call, we actually can take the Adobe Visit ID, attach it to the Test and Target ID, and put it into Invoke in real time, so that we actually don't even have to think about the phone numbers, we just put a book on the website, and it, when we go back and analyze the data, we know which experience you saw, which phone calls you got, which keywords you came from. So it actually, the integration, it was tricky to get it done uh, the way that we wanted to do it. And it's, that part is not like the easiest, but it's not rocket science. Um, it made it really easy once we got test and target ID into Invoca because we could just say, go run the test, don't even worry about the phone numbers, and then when you're done, you just say a test ID one, test ID two, who got what phone calls and what the big number Make sense? Yeah, because you're attaching, you're saying you're attaching the test ID to the, to, to the phone call, right? Yeah, and, and Invoca is like, that's one of the favorite things for me as like a nerdy marketer is Invoca does a very good job at actually attaching, looking at the data along with the phone call. So if you think about it, the phone call by itself is almost, uh, it's really a pipe that gives you a ton of information about what's going on. Uh, in the same way that you might think about a digital lead that's kind of a paper lead that goes into a SQL database or something like that that says name, address, phone number, whatever, whatever you're also collecting, shoe size, and whatever. Um, Invoca gives you a lot of information and you can attach a bunch of information to it at the same time, whether it's a cookie ID, so you know is this a customer, is this not a customer, is this whatever, whatever, you know, experiences. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I like to use the product. It's just because of all the data that you can transmit at the exact same time. And you can do it all in real time too, which is pretty neat. Um, you know, for example, you're asking about apps. Like, I can tell you that with Vivid, uh, they might be interested saying this, um, we take all the invoke information and actually pass it right into our sales center. And one of the things that we did to help like, bridge the conversation was, I can actually tell our sales agents before the person hits the phone is gonna pick up that call what the weather is in the place the person's calling from. Um, so, because you have location variables with IP addresses, and so I can say, oh, it's negative 50 degrees in Minnesota. Is that why you're calling me in inside? So, it's, it's pretty neat. Anything else? Yeah. Do you test the call to action and also the numbers, the digits of the phone number? Does that have any uh, effect on conversion rates? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. So, uh, Kyle shared with you one of the things that we did at uh, Vivint was uh, tap to call. And we actually found that on mobile devices that that language actually worked better than call us or call now or whatnot, whatever. Uh, so, yeah, we tested, we tested the calls to action specifically. I think, actually, I'm going to find this. Um, this is. So this is funny. So we actually tested putting a little phone icon on a desktop application next to the phone number, and that actually had a lift. Again, my favorite thing about testing is that you and I, everyone in this room has ideas about what we think works. 
but ultimately it's a very democratized society and testing where users actually determine what wins and what loses. You you can literally have your designers be like, this is the best thing ever we're gonna put on our website, and your users might think it's the biggest piece of crap. Excuse my language. So ultimately I love the democratization of testing that you can think the dumbest thing will happen, but they actually have fantastic results. And in this case, we put that on the phone number and it actually worked out well on desktop devices. So uh, that's one yes. The other one was, hey, you use different digits, things like that. Um, so there is a lot of research that is out there publicly that says 800 numbers are better than 85 fives and 8 and 8s. Uh, I think that's true. Uh, I've also seen with local numbers in specific markets actually have more positive effects. Uh, another one is local numbers is callback numbers uh, from sales centers if you're doing an outbound actually have a more positive effect as well versus an 800 number coming into somebody. Other questions? Or we got a, yeah, whatever you got. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah.